Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Fairy Money back again with another video, and today we have the patch notes that uh, we went over on Tuesday. The twenty nine point two point two patch notes for Hearthstone. So this is the patch where there's going to be a bunch of nerfs and buffs. So let's go ahead and get right into the meat of the patch. Real quick, we got a dev comment where it says, This patch is a little different than our usual balance patches. It's more about the general design direction of the game than it is about the particular power outliers, though we hit a few of those too. Right now, there are a lot of cards that can remove player agency and raise the power level of the game beyond where we want for a uh, for four-set meta. We're looking at a variety of these meta-defining cards in this patch, from OTK-style cards to powerful AoE effects that make it feel like your minions don't matter. So basically, the gist of this patch is trying to make the board stick a little more. There will always be cool, dreamy cards in Hearthstone. That's part of what makes Hearthstone Hearthstone. But these car these types of cards can uh, sometimes be disproportionately more fun to play with than play against. We don't want these kinds of cards to make up the most powerful and prevalent archetypes in the game, especially if they create metagames where player agency feels low. There are a few categories of changes in this patch. The first is cards that can end the game quickly when played, and which warp the g entire game around around whether you get to play them at that right time. No duplicate cards are also a subsection of this. Being able to draw your deck to avoid the downside of these cards is an interesting uh, deck construction challenge, but it is in large part devolved into turbo draw decks that tend to be less interactive and not in the spirit of these cards. Basically like the uh, Wheel Warlock or the Highlander, uh, Odin Warrior, where it would just, uh, or the Highlander Reno, Reno, uh, Warrior, where it would just, uh, use stuff like Acolyte of Pain plus, uh, Aftershocks or something to fill up their hand so that way they can get, uh, all the duplicates out of their deck so that way they can play their brain in their Reno, that way they can just, uh, go off for the rest of the game. The second category is Powerful Uncapped Board Clears. We've made it, and we will continue to make AoE effects, but this particular instance but these particular instances are too efficient at clearing the board, making minion-based strategies feel helpless. The third category is cards that are just a little too strong in their decks and should be toned down a bit. Similarly, our wild changes are to some clear power and play experience outliers in that mode. Uh, yeah, I believe there's like three or four wild changes. We'll uh, get to those. Those are towards the end of the patch notes, but yeah. Finally, we're making some buffs too. A lot of the changes we're making in this patch are to weaken new cards or strategies that came from Wizbang's Workshop. But we don't want to just go back to the meta we had before the expansion, so we've identified some underperforming Wizbang's uh, Workshop archetypes that we think better align with our overall goals for the format and infusing them with a bit more power to give them another chance. So basically it's just uh, buffing up some of the lower performing uh, Wizbang's Workshop uh, decks that they had in mind. This probably won't be a one and done fix. It definitely won't. It, it usually never. It never is. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the game after these changes go live and continue to push towards a game that aligns with our design philosophy. All right. So with that being said, let's go into what cards are getting nerfed down here. To start off, Reno is going to 9 mana from 8 mana. And also, all of the uh, Showdown in the Badlands uh, Highlander cards uh, where it would give the no duplicates uh, thing, now always says if your deck started with no duplicates. So not only will Plagues not uh, hinder a Highlander strategy anymore, but also... 
you cannot just run duplicates of all your good cards and then just draw them and then use them later on. So now, as long as you make a actual Reno deck, you will be able to benefit from the Reno effects. Zilliax is getting uh, one of its modules nerfed again, which I, I, I'm not surprised about. Uh, all of the modules are really powerful, and I feel like more than one should have been hit. I feel like the ticking uh, module uh, in particular should have been nerfed, or the pylon module, whichever one the uh, one where it... Uh, brings the cost down i feel like those are that combination is still a little egregious but i am very happy to say that the stealth uh the virus module no longer has stealth and in and it also gains an extra one health but this will get rid of all of the annoying uh, virus module plus the uh double attack module so you don't have to deal with the the Minion that you can't interact with that doubles its attack every turn and then just swings once and then kills you. Gaslight Gatekeeper! Oh, I'm so happy to see this card getting nerfed. Oh my gosh, yes. Going from 3 to 4 mana. I touched on the, this card uh, whenever I talked about the uh, patch notes on Tuesday's video. Uh, but yeah, Gaslight Gatekeeper... Big uh, card, not only in uh, Reno Warrior, where you would uh, activate it, use uh, play this after you use Thogren, to basically wipe out your opponent's hand, deck, and field. But also, lately it's been used in the Miracle Rogue, where it has been uh, working well with Playhouse Giant, and basically playing down a bunch of 8-8s. But yeah, Gaslight Gatekeeper and going from 3 to 4 mana doesn't kill the card. It'll still see play. It's still really, it's still going to be really good in that draw rogue. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> and Miracle Salesman technically gets nerfed, but also Snake Oil Seller because uh, the Snake Oil card itself is also getting nerfed from 0 mana to 1 mana. So not only does Sif Mage and Nature Shaman have to actually pay mana to deal damage to us from in hand. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> now now it just costs one mana regardless. So people that you normally trade the card anyways into their deck, no changes basically to this card. The only change is really the damage from in hand for like if you were going for an otk with sif or if you were going for an otk with nature shaman wheel of death it it, it uh changed the uh way the turns actually count up it actually start it actually start counting at the start of every one of your turns Instead of at the end, like I said during the uh, Tuesday video when we were going over the patch notes, I touched on how they should have uh, made it like a Swords of Revealing Light kind of effect, which this basically is. It's instead of uh, at the start, it, instead of uh, at the end of the opponent's turn, it's at the start of your turn. So basically the same thing. So basically Swords of Revealing Light. That's what I said and that's what they went with and it's a no-brainer. But yeah, with the Wheel Warlock losing uh, Reno, uh, I don't expect this list, I don't expect Wheel Warlock to remain a top performer for long. And besides, they they that one extra turn where uh, your opponent has to kill you, it's a, it does matter now. So I... I don't think it's going to be as strong as it used to be. I think it's more going to be like the French strategy now that it was planned on being. And also Forge of Wills. I'm so happy this card is getting nerfed. I hate this card so much. Uh, going from 3 to 4 mana, this card synergized way too well with a lot of the Warlock cards. Like the... Uh, it, it 
it synergized way too well with the warlock strategies whether it was wheel warlock where you played uh, your uh dark alley pack to to uh, get an extra eight eight seven seven six six whatever uh stats the minion would be forge of wills was a big swing high win rate card in all the warlock decks especially in pain warlock it allowed a, a free five five when used on an imprisoned horror it allowed an extra eight eight when used on a, a molten giant and now it slowed down a little uh will that be relevant yeah because you can't play it on curve anymore with a lot of the uh strategies but uh it could still see play in Pain Warlock. Not a lot of Pain Warlock nerfs in this list, in this uh, set of patch notes. So, honestly, I think that will be probably the best deck in the game. Unless uh, something else rises from the ashes. But, who knows? It very well could, very well could, possibly not. Depends. Uh, speaking of Pain Warlock, the only Pain Warlock nerf besides uh, Forge of Wills is Imprisoned Horror going from a 5-5 to a 4-4. Although it is significant to, uh, with, you get less stats out for free, but also Forge of Wills doesn't uh, give you a 5-5 anymore, it gives you a 4-4, that's very relevant because a lot of the uh, AoE cards nowadays do deal like three to four damage so it, it's a lot less uh imprisoned horror will not be sticking around a lot of the time on a board as easily as it used to time winder zurimi actually got a nerf yeah it was hinted that it was going to be nerfed as well and also Speaking of Zerimi, uh, I posted a Zerimi Priest video yesterday. Go check that out if you haven't already. Uh, this de this card definitely needed nerfed. <laughs> if you if you saw the uh, video yesterday, I went like seven in one in that video. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy, but yeah. Now, instead of five other dragons, now it's eight other dragons, which is very, uh, which is very relevant, which, although you can uh, just use a lot of the cards like, uh, a creator, like, uh, what, what, what's the, uh, creation, uh, what's the three, two called? I don't remember. It's, a. Uh, it's a two mana three two that adds a temporary copy, whatever that's called. I forget the name off the top of my head for some reason. Um, <laughs> although you can use that to add uh, other copies of those one cost dragons that you would like to run, um, you're just going to need to run more dragons at that point. Honestly, I think the... I think now... Zerimi Priest is going to go more into a uh, actual OTK version uh, kind of thing where it does run a lot of dragons, but it's going to be like a very big one board setup where it just goes both Thirsty Drifters plus Zerimi plus whatever else, and then it does uh, its combo, and then it kills you the turn after. It could still work out. But it's a whole lot slower and uh, it takes a lot more effort. Threads of Despair! Uh, going from 1 to 2 mana. Uh, yeah, one, one, of the, uh, one of you guys in the comments on uh, th Tuesday's video mentioned this. I, for I completely forgot about Threads of Despair. To be honest, I've only run into Threads of Despair on ladder like once. <laughs> At least... At least when it mattered. <laughs> like, uh, I, I I even had Threads of Despair in, in my Death, Rainbow Death Knight deck at one point. And honestly, I took both copies out because I just thought it, it, it just didn't do a whole lot for me. But yeah, uh, 
it, it's a it had a really good interaction with uh, sickly grime walker which as you can see down here uh it is also being nerfed but we'll go over that in just a second uh but yeah you could just go th sickly grime walker hero power plus threads of despair to absolutely clear the entire board but Fortunately for me, I never had to worry about it because I, apparently I just uh, wasn't running any uh, big decks that <laughs> big enough decks uh, that worried about the board uh, enough uh, that warranted the Grime Walker Threads of Despair combo to for it to happen. But yeah, Threads of Despair going from one to two mana makes a lot of sense. It makes it line up very well with the same power level as Defile. And then speaking of Sickly Grime Walker, Sickly Grime Walker going from a 3-mana 2-4 to a 4-mana 3-5. Uh, like I said, it comboed really well with uh, uh, Threats of Despair because it was like a 6-mana combo. But another 6-mana combo that it went really well with was Sickly Grime Walker into Crop Rotation. Uh, where it could just kill off four of your opponent's big minions. Uh, but yeah, uh, don't really have much else to say. Sickly Grime Walker going to be slowed down a little bit, but it's still going to be relevant. And uh, you can still use the Grime Walker plus Threads of Despair uh, board clear, but it'll cost eight mana now instead of six mana like it used to be. And then we get into the warrior nerfs. We've got Sanitize. Sanitize going from 5 mana to 6 mana. But it's getting a little bit of a buff towards its forge effect. Where uh, instead of gaining 3 armor first uh, before the uh, wipe, board wipe, it gains 4 armor first. So this, I I mean like the 1 mana cost, it it doesn't typically see uh, get played on five unless you're just really dying <laughs> on uh, on turn five. Like if you're really low, uh, which can happen a lot, especially if, if you're going up against like a spell token hunter. Um, but yeah, uh, I not a big change to this card. Um, so. I honestly, I don't think it's going to impact it that much. It's just going to only thing it's really going to impact is like what, uh, what you're going to do with the rest of your mana after you've done sanitize. Like if you're at full mana, if you're at 10, you won't have that extra mana to use, um, to use something else. <laughs> And then Trial by Fire. Trial by Fire going from uh, 6 mana to 7 mana. Like I, again, uh, another suggestion I put out on uh, Tuesday's video. I, I did a lot of predict predictions right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Trial by Fire was just a really, really good uh, warrior card. And it can still go, go to 6 mana with uh, the help of Steam Guardian. But yeah, you're not going to be uh, seeing this on turn 6 as easily as it used to be. Unless you like coin it out. Or if uh, you play Steam Guardian and get this discounted. But yeah, less efficient board clears. As, as they uh, said from the uh, patch notes. And yeah. <laughs> trial by fire going back from uh six mana to seven mana once again uh definitely gonna be hurting warrior and speaking of hurting warrior hurting reno warrior which i am all for uh Bo boom boss thogren will no longer shuffle the tnts into the warrior's deck it will now shuffle it into the opponent's deck so Although it does have the same effect, when drawn, it will blow up another card in the uh, hand and in the field and in the deck. But the TNTs will not blow up any other TNTs. So, unfortunately, it 
it won't blow itself up. That's that's sad to see. I I would kind of hope that it did. Um, but what if the uh, only cards in your deck were just the TNTs? I don't know. Either way, but yeah, this is the this uh, Boom Boss Thogren was a big card in. Uh, Reno Warrior because after they got the Brand effect and the Reno effect out of, out of the way, they could just uh, go Boom Boss Thogren and just absolutely wipe out six cards not only on your field but in your hand and in your deck, and it was basically game over at that point. And now, uh, and after you play Thogren, you play the uh, three mana the what's called i forgot already the gaslight gatekeeper uh to shuffle uh your hand into your deck and then just draw as many tnts as possible but now that combo is done and i'm happy about it i am so happy about it <laughs> i'm so glad this card got nerfed i i absolutely I had a lot of bad uh, games ruined because of Boom Boss Thogren, where it would always destroy my climatic necrotic explosion right when I needed it, or destroy uh, my hell yeah whenever I needed it, or something like that. Always blew up my key cards. <sighs> but yeah, nah, it, it still will, but now it just won't be as efficient. <laughs> And then we've got the uh, only two uh, Nature Shaman nerfs, which, honestly, not that big a hit, if you ask me. Uh, Flash of Lightning going from two to three mana. Again, like, I, I was expecting more, if I'm being honest. I was expecting, like, draw a card, your next uh, Nature spell costs one next turn or something, or, like, your next three or something like that. But, nope, it's going to be just a, a one-mana nerf. Uh, not much else to say. Disappointed with the Nature Shaman nerfs, honestly. I think that's going to be one of the better uh, decks to play after the patch, which is live now, as uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, and then Crash of Thunder, another one-mana nerf. Going from five to six mana, but... With the amount of uh, nature spells they play in one turn for the OTK, it is basically a zero mana nerf. It It's still going to be zero mana. <laughs> uh, yeah, Na Nature Shaman, it's going to go crazy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be nuts. <laughs> and then Jungle Gym gets a little bit of a hit going from uh, three durability now down to two durability for... Uh, the jungle gem location for Hunter. Um, I'm surprised this is the only hit for Hunter. Uh, it's very high win rate in uh, low uh, low meta uh, ranks. I I thought they were gonna do something more, <laughs> but it's it's still gonna be good. Um, just uh, gonna have one less durability on that location. I don't really have a lot to say for Jungle Gym. It's been very... It's been a pain in my butt to deal with, to say the least. Um, and then, here we go for the wild nerfs. We've got uh, three of them. Yeah, three of them. So, you got Time Warp for the Open the Way Gate quest reward. Instead of just taking an extra turn... It now says take an extra turn only once per game. So you cannot rediscover this uh, card off of stuff like Rewind or anything like that to try and get extra turns after the extra turns. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this was really needed because I saw a lot of games about that deck in Wild. It was crazy. Um <laughs> And then Floop's Glorious Gloop going, uh, changing from uh, whenever a minion dies to gain from gain one mana crystal to refresh a mana crystal. So 
Recently, Hearthstone changed uh, the mana cap, so you could actually go over the mana cap. If it was a 10, you can go to 11 if you use, like, a coin or this card before it got nerfed. Uh, you could actually go infinite, <laughs> uh, infinitely above, and it would be used with a card like Forbidden Fruit. And, yeah, it would just basically be an OTK at that point. Um, but yeah, now it's just refresh a mana crystal. So now, uh, the max it can really do is 20, uh, mana crystals for the forbidden fruit, which is still 40 damage, which can kill in one. <laughs> it, it can still OTK someone. Um, <laughs> But uh, it won't be in the hundreds of uh, attack damage like it used to be. And then finally, Snowfall Graveyard uh, going from 3 mana to 5 mana. So there has been a Mine Rogue uh, very, very hectic uh, meta around the Mine Rogue. <laughs> Where it would play Naval Mine, which is a 2 mana 0 4 that uh, Death Rattle dealt 4 damage to the enemy hero, and then they would use uh, that along with this and the uh, 3 mana uh, Necrium uh, weapon that would uh, trigger a random uh, Death Rattle of a minion. And yeah, they would just have this trigger like a million times and just kill you in one or two turns. <laughs> You'd be dead in one or two turns. There was no in between. Uh, but yeah, those are the nerfs, the rest of the... Uh, but now we got the buffs. Um, so obviously uh, they're going over like the no duplicate cards like Gunslinger, Kurtris, uh, Riastraza, Thelduran... Uh, Spirit of the Badlands, Elise, In Priest, Dr. Holiday, Deep Miner Brand, Marut, Stonebinder, and Rena Lone Ranger having the uh, start of a f start of game effect with uh, the no duplicates clause. And then we've got Manufacturing Error going from uh, six mana to five mana, basically Skull of Gold Dan for uh, Spell Mage. Uh, this card scares me because it is very good in that uh, set of decks. <laughs> it uh, again, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this deck, the Spell Mage, uh, didn't s start seeing play and everything. I I wouldn't be surprised if it started seeing uh, consistent high level performance in the meta but yeah it going from six mana to five mana and basically just discounting by three sunset volley uh oh, this 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 is actually a nerf in my eyes going from 10 mana down to nine mana you can no longer get Sunset Volley off of the Tendrils. So, like, whenever I saw all of the uh, nerfs and buffs at the at the start, I thought I was going to be able to uh, still play the uh, Tendril Warrior or Tendril Shaman, either one, and just try and get 10 mana spells to get Sunset Volley a million times, but no. You cannot get Sunset Volley off of uh, the 10 mana version of the uh, Tendril Lane more. It, it can only be activated once, and uh, it's only a 1 out of 2 chance between uh, the Scourge and this. Which is still a good 9 mana spells, but now the only 10 mana spell in the game is Table Flip. So, unfortunately, Tendril, uh, tendril decks are dead in the water now but it was good while it lasted it was fun while it lasted all right and then M mesa dune uh the fractured is now going from six mana down to five mana and uh it's gonna be pretty good in those uh elemental mages I feel like the best minion to hit off of that is the one where it just absolutely nukes your enemy hero 
for seven damage in one hit. <laughs> that card is what I'm more scared of than this, if I'm being honest. I'm just glad that they didn't buff the four, five, five mana, seven, four, whatever it is. I think it's a four mana, seven, four, or something like that. But yeah, it, it's crazy. Uh, and then we got some druid buffs. We've got woodland wonders. Uh, so now it summons uh two two five beetles with taunt instead of uh, two one five beetles, and it still costs three less if you have spell damage. Which, I mean, druid still kind of dead in the water. <laughs> all all of its good cards are gone. Uh, Zaka fox snout. Seven mana down to six mana again. Hero Power Druid could be good. I think it it could probably see uh, some good fringe play after uh, after this uh, patch notes and stuff. But I don't know, man. I, I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think it's enough. If I'm being honest, Chia Drake going from a two four to a three five again. A good card, but. It's not it's not good enough to get Druid out of the dead realm that it's in right now. Uh, Hagatha the Fabled, I actually really like this card. I was actually going to play a uh, uh, Tendril Shaman or something like that uh, some sometime later as well. I was going to have this card in it because uh, you could get like Wish Upon a... Sh wish upon a star you get the uh six mana that summons like a random murloc dragon whatever um it i feel like hackathon is a good card now uh you could draw two spells have it be uh slimes and then you could uh, trigger those uh, battle cries with shutter block and those are gonna be really good and really relevant <laughs> Aftershock's going from 5 mana down to 4 mana, so uh, basically, uh, it's still the way it is now. It's just uh, going to be when it normal, it's a normal cost is going to go from 5 to 4, but it's still going to be 3 mana if you use the spell the previous turn. Uh, but yeah, I really like Aftershock's, so... I think this is actually probably the big sweet spot for it because not only does uh, now you can just not draw this off of Agatha, so that's really good to have. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it still costs three now, and it, it just uh, it, it's just more efficient, honestly, um, and it helps the shaman a lot more. Which is good. Then we got Botface uh, going from a 3 9 to a 4 12. This card's still ass, if I'm being honest. This card is still ass. <laughs> Nobody's going to be seeing any play about this unless they actively try to for like content or something like that, or for the fun of it. Uh, Toy Ranosaurus, which. Actually, I'm very happy about this. I was actually... I, I've been thinking about making a Highlander Hunter uh, as of late. late. So, uh, yeah. Toy Ranosaurus, the new version, is uh, definitely going to go into that. It is a, now a 7-mana uh, 7-7 seven seven that, uh, ru with Rush, that Death Rattle deals 7 to a random enemy instead of dealing 5. Uh, yeah. Really good uh, buff to this card. I think uh, this card is going to see a lot more play, especially in... I think Highlander Hunter, especially, will probably be the best deck in the meta, if I'm being honest. And then we've got uh, some rogue buffs. We've got Shoplifter Goldbeard going from 6 mana to 5 mana. Pirate Rogue just hasn't been good, if I'm being honest, so I don't think this changes anything. But I'm more worried about one of the cards later on, especially for wild players. Uh, Crystal Cove 
now uh, represents more of like the crystal core <laughs> kind of thing but where uh now instead of uh, the next minion you summon this turn it set its stats to four four it is now five five just like uh, the crystal core quest reward in rogue from ungoro crane game going from uh, nine mana to eight mana i mean this card ass too <laughs> If I'm being honest, it could be like seven mana. It could be six mana. This card is still going to be ass. <laughs> um, Yeah, summon copies of two demons in your deck. The De Demon Warlock is not that good, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Fly off the shelves. Uh, This card scares me a little bit. Uh, Where... <laughs> Going from 4 mana to 3 mana, deal 1 damage to all enemy minions, repeat for each dragon you're holding. Yeah, so about the efficient AoE board clears. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Priest, I feel, could be decent uh, after the nerfs and everything, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. And then uh, Papercraft Angel going from 3 mana 2-5 to a 2 mana 2-3 where your hero power costs 0. I I just don't think this card is good enough in standard. It could be good in wild because you could have this uh, plus Anduin if you haven't activated Raza yet uh, to just have the infinite uh, thing go off, uh, the infinite shadow form hero power. But yeah, uh, again, I don't think Papercraft Angel is going to cut it right now in standard, um, but we'll find out. But now we've got the last of two buffs in the uh, set of patch notes. We've got Treasure distribu Distributor, where uh, before it was a one mana one two. After you uh, summon a pirate, give it plus one attack. Now, after you summon a pirate, give it and this minion plus one attack. That's what scares me. Because you play this, you have uh, patches of pirate come out of your deck in wild. You have parachute brigand to uh, come out of your hand and everything. Next turn, you just prep out a cannon barrage. You just deal like 50 damage in one turn. It's insane. This is going to be insane in like a... Uh, pirate rogue and wild it's gonna be wild for uh pirate warrior and wild pirate decks in general are just happy to see this card because you you got a lot of synergy going on especially if you play like south sea captain on that board oh my god oh my god pirate decks and wild are just busted <laughs> and then Whizbang got like a all the experimental decks uh, adjusted uh, to be more awesome, except for the Demon Hunter, Warlock, and Mage ones, which I feel like the Warlock one is just ass, in my opinion. The Mage one is definitely ass. It is the worst one besides the Druid one, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, Warlock could be good, but it's 20 cards in your deck, but I don't know. But anyways, that's going to be it for the patch notes. What do you guys think of it? it, it long video for uh, patch notes. I'm surprised. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be posting a WWE uh, My Rise video. So hopefully you all stick around for that tomorrow. Um, again, if you haven't already, go check out the Zarimi Priest uh, gameplay yesterday that I put out. I would really much appreciate it. And with that being said, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.